Good afternoon. Welcome to Never Alone Singles Ministry. Today we are continuing with our series, The Path to Repentance. The title of today's lesson is The Blood of Jesus Prevails. The Blood of Jesus Prevails. Three weeks ago, we discussed how Jesus conquered sin once and for all. Today, we are going to look at the book of Luke, chapter 22, after um, we open with prayer. So let us pray. Holy Father, I admit that we need you, Lord Jesus, to come, Father God, and meet us here. Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord, that your Spirit would come alive through your word, Lord Jesus, that your spirit would refresh hearts, that your spirit would awaken hearts this afternoon, Lord Jesus, and that people would draw near to you and repent of those sins, Father God. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, that's my cat, honey. She likes to kind of <laughs> Bible, Bible study sometimes. Luke 22, verses 14 to 71. Luke 22, beginning with verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. Verse 18. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given to me. Do this in remembrance. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the cup, he, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me, is with is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They begin to question among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The king of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you will not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? 
but am I among you as one who serves? You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sit all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Verse 34. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the booster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked him, When I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack nothing? Did you lack anything? When I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. I said to them, But now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Verse 37. It is written, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went on as usual to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more honestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Jesus arrested. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up and a man who was called Judas, one of the troll, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what, he, what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of the, verse 50, and one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his white right ear. Verse 51, but Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Verse 52. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, The officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, Am I, le am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness wanes. Peter disowns Jesus. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter, Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. Verse 58. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly, this fellow was with him. 
for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The gods mocked Jesus. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy who hit you. And they said many other insulting things to him. Jesus before Pilate and Herod. Excuse me. Jesus before Pilate and Herod. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the laws, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, excuse me, met together and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you would not answer. But for now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. Then they all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Verse 71. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Look at Luke chapter 23. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Verse 4 Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stores up the people, all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. For what he had heard of, from what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then he would in his shoulders ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, he, that day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, "You brought this man as one who was. You brought this. You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion." I have examined him in your presence, and I have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! 
released Beribus to us. Beribus had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for mortal. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed them again. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. Before Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, verse 21. But they kept shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty, therefore I will have him punished, and then release him. Excuse me. Verse 23. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and the shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant the demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and mortal. The one they asked for and surrendered Jesus to their will, the crucifixion of Jesus. As the, soldier, as the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Syrian, who was on his his who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who melt, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, will also let out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called Straw, called Straw they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Then there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. Verse 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you feel God, he said, since you were under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Crucifixion of Jesus.
Now we're going to talk about the death of Jesus. It was then about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn into two. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat the breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not considered, excuse me, who had not consented to their decision and action. This is the burial of Jesus. He came from the Judean town of Arrhythmia, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb, cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It, it was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Jesus has risen. Luke chapter 24. Jesus has risen. On the fourth day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took their spices. They had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone and rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them in their fight. The women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Verse 9. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because the wars seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and went into the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. He went away, wondering to himself what had happened on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, 
Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were cut from recognizing him. Verse 17. What are you discussing together as you walk along? He asked them. What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have the th- who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus and Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in the word and deed before God. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests handed the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more? Is it the third day since all this took place? In addition, some of the women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah suffer in these things? And then enter his glory? In beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said and all the scriptures concerning himself. As as they approached the village which they were going, Jesus continued on as it as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together. And they and saying, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 37. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said, when he had said this, he showed Verse 40. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Verse 41. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Verse 44. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, 
and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The, the ascension of Jesus. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Now, we just read... Luke 22 through most of Luke 22 through 24. We've read over about two and three fourths chapters. Have you played this well? Change my heart, O oh God. The favor of God is upon your life. It's called grace. His mercies are new every morning. Are you following where the Lord is leading you? Allow him to guide your footsteps as you place one foot in front of the other. Christ came to save sinners like you and me. Our Savior forgave us as he drew his last breath. The whole definition of love is centered on the gospel. Our hope rests in Jesus. We are never alone. Focus on Jesus and the price he played at Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross for everyone. He loves you. Christ has its sin to do as his forgiveness, repentance, grace, mercy, compassion, love, and kindness. Prayer changes us and makes us more like Jesus. He is the one who changes things. God doesn't overlook your pain. He meets you right in the middle of your suffering. Jesus says, I love you to the cross and back. The Lord sent his one and only son, Jesus, to take all pain upon himself. Are you focused on your pain or gazing upon the Savior who will deliver you from your suffering? He is the Savior. You will be set free from pain. If you have any prayer requests, I would be glad to pray for you this afternoon. Post your requests in the comment section right here on live stream. And I would be glad to take your request before the throne of heaven and place it at the feet of Jesus. Who in return will answer that request according to his will. Whether yes, no, or wait. Excuse me. It might not be the answer you want, but it's the best answer that he has for you because his will is better than all will. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts and he has our best interests at heart. That might be hard to remember that he has our best interests at heart. 
but it's worth um, memorizing that Jesus loves you with everything in him. He's for you, not against you. He's, um, he's with you. So let us know how you can, how we can pray for you. And we would be glad to pray for you. If you have never accepted Jesus as your personal savior, um, I would be glad to lead you in the plan of salvation where you can play the prayer of salvation and accept Jesus today and become a Christian. Not that one. Went to slide my phone up all over to fit to my camera and it decided that it was going to make the string go black. Sorry about that. Um. Anyway, but I would be glad to uh, lead you in the plan of salvation. We're going to play that in a moment. Um. Please keep playing for a friend of mine that still need God's healing touch. Let's pray for them. Holy Father, I ask you to touch my friend and heal their body. Let them continue to make a steady recovery, Lord Jesus, from the operation, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you mend their body, that you heal their body, Lord Jesus. Please, God, just miraculously. Make their body whole and all. Heal them from head to toe. Please, God. Seek the Lord to be healed over them so that they will be completely rejuvenated, renewed, and restored. Lord Jesus, let this, let their body heal. Let this infection leave their body once and for all. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Um, back to the plan of salvation. Jesus died on the cross for your sins as you warned about today. The blood of Jesus prevails. He conquered sin once and for all. 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he selflessly gave up his life so that you could be a follower of Christ, so that you could have a relationship with the Savior of the Lord, so that you could have forgiveness of your sins, you could have redemption and repentance. When you repent of your sins, you turn away from your sins, and you ask Jesus for, and you ask Jesus for forgiveness. Um. And he will gladly forgive you. See, Jesus graciously, graciously, Jesus graciously extends his hand of forgiveness to us. Jesus is pure. Jesus is lovely. Jesus has a forgiving heart because that's what our Savior is. He's a forgiver. And he wants to extend his grace to you today. All you have to do is ask him. Ask him for forgiveness. You're already walking along the path to repentance. All you have to do is take one step toward him. He will wash away your sins. As the hymn says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. His mercy is more. Will you accept his mercy today and allow him to wash away your sins by the blood of Jesus? Pray this prayer. Holy Father, 
I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Please forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all my iniquities. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I open the door of my heart to you. And I ask you to take up residence in my heart where you can live forever. Where you can make your home in my heart. Where you will reside there forever. Because Lord, your light shines brightly in our hearts and in our lives from the moment we get saved. Lord, I believe you sent your one and only son Jesus 2,000 years ago to die on the cross after he walked this earth for, for 33 years. Lord, he was born in a stable for your will. He was born in a stable for your purpose. To teach others in parables. To do miracles here on earth. To raise the dead. Lord, he raised Lazarus from the dead while he was here on earth. And then at the age of 33, he died upon the cross for the sins of the entire world. He placed our sins upon himself, selflessly giving up his life and drawing his last breath. Why? So that we wouldn't have to suffer for our iniquities. So that we could repent and be forgiven. And have oneness with with you, Lord. So that we could be made right with Jesus. So that we wouldn't have to suffer consequences for all our doing. Because Jesus paid the price for our sins. He did it out of love. He did it out of mercy. He did it out of grace. He did it. So that one day. We could enter into glorious heaven and walk the streets of gold alongside Jesus and hear the words, well done to my good and faithful servant. With you I am well pleased. Lord, your word says if, the, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. When Jesus was walking this earth with his short disciples, they asked him, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? He said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and with all your might. But there is one greater than this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you, Jesus, for saving souls here today. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus, for letting people rededicate their lives to Christ today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. If you just made that decision to accept Jesus, we celebrate with you. We are so glad that you chose to say yes to Jesus today. If you do not have a Bible and you need a Bible, Send me a message and I would be glad to send you a Bible. All you have to do is click that message button at the top of the group. You can also purchase a Bible at Amazon um, online, Christian Bookstore online, um, or you can purchase one um, at your local grocery store, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Grocery Outlet, Grocery Outlet, Wash has them for twelve to thirteen dollars. Um, if you have a bread basket, they have them. If you have a local Christian bread store, they have them. Those are just a few stores 
where you can purchase a Bible. Or you can download the Bible to your tablet or mobile device for free. Go to your store under applications and um, on your tablet or mobile device and it will show you free Bible applications that you can download and you can start reading God's Word that way. That's just another way where you can get the Word of God into your heart, soul, and mind and draw closer to Jesus. Have a blessed day. If you ever need prayer, you can come to Jesus, our intercessor, prayer ministry, and we would be glad to pray for you. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please click the share button so that more people can hear it and be encouraged in their walk with Christ. Next Monday is Labor Day. We will not be having a Bible study next Monday due to the holiday. I figured a lot of people will be enjoying the three-day weekend and will be on vacation and busy with Labor Day cookouts and activities and all the fun holiday um all the fun holiday happenings. So, on next Bible study here at Never Alone Singles Ministry will be September the 9th. September the 9th, Monday, September the 9th. Tomorrow, Coffee with the One True King will be having Bible study between 8 and 10 a.m. Pop-up live stream will be between 8 and 10 a.m. Um, Joyful Heart Women's Ministry will be having a live stream on Wednesday between 8 and 10 a.m. September the 9th, we will be having a live stream here at Never Alone Singles Ministry between 12 and 2. So that's the latest update on all Bible studies. If you um, have missed the current schedule for all Bible studies, it's um, in the featured section of our group. It's right at the top. There'll be a section that says videos not videos, but there'll be a section that says featured that'll have the latest Bible study videos that are current. Um, and at the very front of that will be a uh, poster that says updated Bible study schedule and it'll give you the times. That way if you can that way if you forget, you can stay up to date that way. Um, if you enjoyed today's lesson, please click that share button so that more people can hear it. Also, please invite people to our ministries, to our Bible studies, excuse me, so that they can be encouraged in the Word of God and walk closer with Jesus and learn more about Him. Bye.